Welcome to a special remote edition of Preps Today with John Millay, starring John Millay from the MSHSL. John is in Boston, and I'm just going to let him tell you what he's doing there. Yeah, hey, Jim. Good to talk to you. I am in Boston. I'm, on, I'm looking out a window 20 floors up in the Boston Marriott at Copley Place. Um, yeah, we are here for the National Federation of State High School Association's annual summer convention. It's in a different city every year. It's been in Boston before, so I knew what I was coming to. And uh, we're talking on Monday afternoon. The the conference concludes this evening with the uh, National High School Hall of Fame induction dinner and our own Joe Maurer. We've talked about this in recent shows. Joe is going into the National High School Hall of Fame tonight. He's he's one of 11. He's the headliner. Um, And what we do when, when our group comes to these conventions, we always take one evening meal and go to a nice restaurant. All the staff members who are here, generally a handful of board of directors members are here, spouses, some kids. So, and we have a nice meal together. We try to find a, a restaurant that has a room we can all sit in together. And we did that Sunday evening and with, uh, with Joe Maurer and his entire entourage, which is his mom, Teresa. That's that's how low level Joe Maurer is. I, I, I was asking him when he goes into the baseball hall of fame in Cooperstown in a few weeks. I said, how, I, I said, I bet every family member you have, even distant relatives, I bet everybody's going. He said, Yeah, anybody who wants to go in our family, we're going to make sure they can go. So this is a little different. It's a big deal. But if you're going into the baseball hall of fame, this is number two on your list. That's number one. So yeah. And you know, it's well known what a great person Joe is. And after the banquet, uh, I spoke a little bit about my dealings with Joe when he was in high school and, and he got up and thanked everybody. And then I, I wish I had set a timer. I don't know how much time Joe spent posing for photos, signing autographs, with everybody. I mean, there were 28 people in there, not named Maurer, and Joe spent time with every one of them. You know, there was a, a board member with her husband and two daughters. <clears throat> I took pictures. I did a lot of the photo taking. People would hand me their cameras, their phones, and I would snap the pictures. And he just took, you know, hey, how are you? I'm Joe. Where are you from? You know, and, and things like that. It was really something. So Joe goes into the Hall of Fame tonight and, uh, and then, uh, Tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll all head for home. And and some of these people have driven here from Minnesota on family vacations. They're going to continue sightseeing and wandering home. And uh, but these conventions are always good. There's a lot of things that go on. I did a workshop presentation on what I do with social media. Had a lot of nice compliments from people on that. So that's the uh, that's the story from Boston, Jim. Excellent. And by the way, I have relatives in, in Boston. They took me to the best Italian restaurant I think I've ever been to. Very modest looking place. Trattoria Il Panino. If you get a chance, check it out. If I had one more dinner on the stocket <laughs> here, I would, but I'm out. I'm booked tonight okay. with this Hall of Fame dinner. I'll be on a plane in the morning. But oh, next, next time. Next time, remind me, and I will, I will get you to that place. <laughs> yeah, Boston's it. an incredible city, so I'm, it, I'm glad you're getting to spend time there. That's really cool. Yeah, it's fine. We all we all went to Fenway Park to see the Red Sox and the yeah. Padres Friday night. That was part of this convention. Everybody got a ticket to the oh, game. That's great. And, and $50 you can use for concessions. Oh, my God. Or, so, yeah, yeah, apparently. And this is like four more than four hundred people at this convention. Wow! I heard I heard that that was the largest group ticket sales in the history of the Boston Red Sox. That's fantastic! Which, yeah, it, it was fun. Fenway is one of the things as American that you have to be there. Yeah, you got to go there at least for one game. Yeah, yeah. And this was my third time there, and yeah, I mean, we this the last time this convention was here. I don't know if they were if they had any home games. I did take a tour on an off day. Uh, yeah, it's phenomenal. Just, yeah, I, I, it's, it's indescribable until you walk in there. No doubt about it. Hey, just to reintroduce the show, he's John Millay from the MSHSL. He writes at John's Journal at the MSH, MSHSL. Or, <laughs> I keep, going, John. keep going, keep going, keep <laughs> going. You can find John's Journal there. You hear his spoken word artistry here at talknorth.com. This is our prep show at talknorth.com. Best way to listen to this show or any show you you like at this uh, network to subscribe to favorite podcast app. It's free. It's the easiest way to listen. I want to thank our longtime sponsors, pizza barn run by proprietor owner, Jody stay great human being uh, who makes great food, takes really good care of people, great food trucks. 
Uh, we're coming to you from the Aquarius Home Services Studios. We want to thank Twill in the Dining Gallery and Bay to Bay Boat Club. All right, let's get to the best of John's journal. Yeah, Jim, I've been uh, I've been uh, talking about this for weeks now. The uh, summer exercise I do, I go through all the John's journal stories I've written over the past school year. Uh, I I have come up with a top ten, but today we're going to talk about the five honorable mention stories, and then in the next show we'll we'll go through number ten through six, and then the show after that we'll get the top five. Really, a, a fun summer thing I get to do. So these are the top five stories. They've all been posted on John's journal, and th- this is in no particular order. Um, I think these are just in the order of, in which they were originally written. Uh, one of them is about Park, the Park High School football team in Cottage Grove, which was the only high school football team in the country last fall that had every player in the program, ninth grade up, wear a guardian cap for every practice and every game and People who've who've seen video from Vikings practices, things like that, you know, you'll see those on the helmets. It's just a big padded, cushiony covering on the helmets, and uh, the, we're going to see a lot more of these as time goes by. Uh, I talked to the the people from the uh, Concussion Institute. I don't remember the the specific name of it here in Boston that studies the brains of former football players, former boxers, and they, they are all on board for guardian caps. I talked to people from the company, which I think is based in Atlanta. And uh, so, yeah, the park Wolfpack, uh, I went to a game and shot a lot of photos, wrote about that. And it, it's, it's, it's something to keep an eye on. That, that story I thought was, was important. Another one of the honorable mention five, John Leeser, a, a longtime official in multiple sports. I caught up with him at and after a football game last fall. He, as of that point, he was 80 years old and in his 60th year as a high school league official. Amazing man, longtime English teacher in the St. Cloud area. Uh, another one of these honorable mention stories is, is a performing arts story. When we had our one act play state festival in St. Paul in February, a bunch of these kids from St. Michael Albertville, they're involved in choir as well as one act play. And the administration did some great things. The choir was invited to, to perform at kind of a Midwestern choir directors conference in Omaha on a Friday morning. And later that day, their one act play was going to perform at, uh, at the College of St. Catherine in St. Paul. So the choir kids took a bus to Omaha on Thursday, got in their hotel, got up early, went to the venue, sang their heart, hearts out, standing ovation from a, from a basically a, a performing arts, performing arts center filled with choir teachers. And then these, I don't know, there were nine or 10 or 12 kids who needed to get back here in a hurry. They were sc- shuttled to the airport in Omaha. Uh, a bus picked them up at the airport. There was no bad weather. This was February. This was not a certain thing. Flights on time. They get to the venue in St. Paul on time. They perform. And I, I talked to everybody involved in that. It was really exceptional. Uh, another one uh, of the honorable mentions, a young man named Tommaso Constantini, a uh, foreign exchange student from Italy, was at Bloomington Kennedy for, for the last school year. The dude went out for the wrestling team, having never wrestled before, and went to state. Pretty cool. He also wow. played play American football for the first time, and by the middle of the year was starting a linebacker. And at the time I did this story, he was thinking about joining the lacrosse team. But that that was really fun at the state wrestling tournament. And the the other, the, the fifth uh, honorable mention story from not too long ago, I went to New Prague for a baseball game and wrote about Sam Helgestad, a, a senior football baseball player in New Prague whose father had passed away. His father was in the military, career military guy, uh, some form of cancer. And I just talked to people about the, all the support. It was incredible, you know, from the baseball team, for sure, from all of his friends in school, from the entire community for this family. So those are the top five honorable mention stories. They're all posted at John's Journal on MSHSL.org. And I have now, uh, as of today on Monday, the number 10 story is posted. I, I, I'm not giving anything away. It's already posted. It's about Zach Goring. Jim, you wrote about him too. The 
basketball coach who led the Apple Valley boys to three state championships and is now a basketball official. That's the number 10 story. We'll talk about that more next week when we start breaking those down. But uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the honorable mentions and number 10. Wow. I stole your 10th best story. I should have sold them the first nine. Too. <laughs> there you go. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> now I get to work on it. Uh, keep pub- publish faster. I need more good stories. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, crank those out, buddy. It's great stuff. All right. We're going to wrap up the show with Blast from the Past and John's most valuable teammate. But first, we want you to know more about Pizza Barn in Princeton. Yeah, there's so many great things happening at the Pizza Barn. Summer's a great time to, to visit right there in downtown Princeton. If you're headed north or south on 169, pull into Princeton. It's easy to find. And, and you mentioned Jody Stay and her great crew. They'll take care of you. You'll have a meal to remember in a, in a really neat setting. And the menu at the Pizza Barn has, has its time-honored favorites. I walk in there. Jody sees me coming. She gets a sausage pizza rolling. I don't even have to open my mouth. Um, and then they always have new items. Uh, they change the, change the menu every, every so often. They don't sit on their laurels because they're always offering delicious new items. And everything on that big menu is available for dine-in, take-out, take-and-bake, or delivery. They cater. And we, of course, can't forget, as you mentioned, those beautiful Pizza Barn food trucks. Check out the Pizza Barn Facebook page to keep up with everything that's happening there. And if you want to see the full menu, if you want to book a food truck, go to pizzabarnprinceton.com. It's all right there. And thanks again to Jody Stay and everybody at the Pizza Barn in Princeton. No doubt about it. Thanks also to Bay to Bay Boat Club. Bay to Bay Boat Club offers a limited number of season-long memberships in our private club and half-day or full-day pontoon boat rentals on Lake Minnetonka. Members have the opportunity to play on luxurious pontoon boats, as well as a variety of well-appointed deck boats, speed boats, and offshore boats. Our daily pontoon boats are deluxe, custom-built boats with many amenities and comfortable seating for up to 14 people. Bay to Bay Boat Club, Country Club Boating. 24 years in business and voted Minnesota's best three years in a row. Please visit us at baytobayboatclub.com for more information. We look forward to welcoming you this summer. And just a personal thanks. Uh, my favorite clothing store, Twill in the Dining Gallery. I went in the other day. They had me in and out in about 10 minutes, got me exactly what I needed and exactly the right <laughs> sizes. I didn't have to try stuff on. They just know they can look at you and tell you what size. It's that kind of a joint. Check them out as a personal favor to me and as a favor to yourself. Now let's get to a blast from the past. Yeah, Jim, this is pretty cool. Um, I mentioned this last night. I was talking about my memories of writing about Joe Maurer, and, and I kind of veered into just what the, what the high school league is all about. It's about giving opportunities for kids as they grow. And I, I mentioned a young lady last night that that's part of this this part of the show. Uh, somebody sent me a photo on Twitter a few days ago. It's a photo I'm very familiar with. It made me smile. It's a pretty simple photo. I am standing with a high school golfer after she had just had a medal put around her neck at the state tournament. Her name is Tricia. She's married now. She's a mom. That photo was 14 years ago. Uh, I joined the high school league in March of 2010. So this is that spring. I, I heard about Tricia. She was a high school senior at McCray in southwestern Minnesota. She was born with one leg. So her right leg is a prosthetic from the hip down. And she was a was a great golfer, probably still is. She went on to play golf at, at Southwest State in, in Marshall, a Division II program. So as a senior, I was writing about her early in the spring. Her goal as a senior, she'd played at state before. Uh, she wanted to win a medal at state. She didn't say, I want to be a state champion, but she wanted to win a medal. And she did that in the Class A state tournament. She was eighth. As soon as she got the, the medal around her neck, she and her mom found me. And her mom, Kelly, took the photo of Trisha and me after the awards ceremony. And that's the photo she posted on Twitter. And Trisha wrote this, quote, MSHSL John, just so you know, this was 14 years ago. I'm guessing that was in response. You know, I, I had put on there, and we've talked about here, my plan to retire in a year. So way back then, her, her mom sent me a copy of that photo. It's, I framed it. It's been sitting in my office for 14 years. So thanks to Trisha for reminding me about that. That's a great memory. And when I was talking about Joe Maurer, I mentioned, you know, everybody knows Joe Maurer, Maurer. Phil Archer, who's on our staff at the high school league, 
he went to Creighton. He was two years older than Joe. Joe talked about the impact Phil had on him as a mentor in, in school. And I said, this is why we do this, because of the Joe Mowers and the Phil Archers and, and the kids who maybe aren't remarkable athletes but do remarkable things, like my friend Tricia, who I've kept in touch with for 14 years. And so, and it was just because she, she posted that photo, tagged me on it, and it, it's a wonderful memory. That's great stuff. All right, and let's wrap up this show with John's most valuable teammate. Yeah, we're nearing the end of these. I think after today, we'll have one more most, most valuable teammate, but today we're honoring Caden Roseth, who just graduated from Lakeville South. He was a fixture in school in adapted sports as well as cross country, swimming, and tennis. Caden is a quality person and a great teammate. As an athlete, he excels at a high level, always placing his teammates above himself. And being with his teammates and competing with them is what he loved to do in high school. The greatest highlights of his high school days were when he got to congratulate his teammates and celebrate their success. Congratulations to Lakeville South. South's Caden Roseth on being a most valuable teammate. Great stuff. Uh, we have more good stuff coming from John the rest of the month, even though it's, you know, things have quieted down in terms of actual sports and activities at the high school level. We still do shows and we still have insights. We still have retrospectives, looks ahead, philosophical discussions, all kinds of good stuff with John. Again, thank you for listening to talknorth.com. Thanks for listening to Preps Today with John Malay. If you like the show, please subscribe. We do appreciate it and we'll talk to you soon. 